everybody. Welcome back to our little patch of dirt. Today we're going to be talking about winter gardens while I transplant some strawberry starts. Let's talk about strawberries for a second. You have two different types of strawberries. You have an everbearing, which produces fruit throughout the year, which we grow because our grandkids love to come into the greenhouse and just pluck one off and eat it. We also have a June bearing strawberry, which will set all their fruit at one time. And they are better to preserve for your jams and jellies. Now you can propagate strawberries two ways. You can take a mature plant this isn't a very mature plant. It was sistered off last year. And you can split the crown, plant them, and you have two, two plants. Or throughout the year, strawberries will produce runners. If you plant those runners, they'll grow another plant. If you have a plant that's under two years old, you should cut those runners off though. Because they take they take a lot of energy away from the plant's growth. We are, actually got our greenhouse from a defunct strawberry company. Second hand. Strawberries weren't big in our list to grow, but in the vertical grow system. We found some viable starts still, so we started them and just kept them going. The grandkids get really mad if they show up and we don't have fresh strawberries for them. Everybody knows it's about the grandkids. I have a confession. I can't stand strawberries. Don't like the taste, don't like the texture. But I do grow a lot of things that I really don't enjoy. Tomatoes. People can take a raw tomato and eat it like it's an apple. Not me. And don't get me wrong. I love salsa. I, I love marinara sauce. I just can't do raw tomatoes. Does that stop me from growing them? No. Because everybody else loves them. I'm doing a snow pea germination test from seed we saved last year. We got 15 cells here. We're doing a random selection of seed. And see what our germination rate is. We do this for all of our seed. That way we know how much seed to plant in an area to get the reward from the effort we put in. A lot of people ask me about the trays I use. These are just little trays you get from the Dollar Tree, the General Tree, big box store. They're relatively inexpensive. They last a while. And when they're done, you can recycle them. They don't just end up another piece of plastic in the landfill. It's February. Everybody's raring to go. They're, they want to get their gardens in. What's stopping you? Sure, I have a greenhouse. I can get ahead. But everyone that has a window has a greenhouse. Start your seeds indoors. If you started right now, you could be having a fresh salad in 30 days before most people even get their gardens in. You get you a big pot like this, separate it into quarters, plant you some leaf lettuce, plant you some kale, some radishes and some snow peas. 30 days, that's one heck of a salad.
What plants should you be starting now? All the information I give you is zone specific. So always check around your area for, for planting dates. But indoors right now, you could start broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, lettuce, oh, beets, turnips, radish. When you plant your radishes, stagger your planting. You should stagger your planting every other week. And it will ensure you a fresh supply. A lot of people will soak their beans and peas overnight. I used to, but I have a tendency not to know what my day is going to be like, and I tend to forget that they're in there. So I just go with the tried and true method of throwing it in the dirt and watering it. Before we got the greenhouse, we used to buy straw bales and build our own little greenhouses. You just drop them out there, put a piece of glass or plastic on top. And they stay pretty warm that way. Sure, you're not going to start a whole garden's worth of seed in it. But it will give you a head start. Post a picture right there. The first greenhouse I ever built, which I don't have a picture of, was out of a trampoline frame and some contractor's plastic. It worked okay. The contractor plastic tore apart within half a season. But it got me hooked. We purchased most of our biannual seeds as starts, our garlics, our onions. Just because it's more time efficient. And in our area, they don't bloom very well. We do save seed from a lot of non-edible plants, flowers. One of our favorites is the bushel gourd or bushel basket gourd. This annual vine puts off a wide variety of gourds that can be dried and used for used for a lot of projects. These vines grow huge. These do really well at farmers markets. People like to take them and make containers out of them. My wife likes to make planters out of them. Cover them in linseed oil, they become waterproof. They do really well at farmers markets and at craft fairs, both as a finished product and is a raw palette. I'm not artistic. It's a gourd to me. Another vining plant we like to like to grow are the sponge loofah gourds. Everybody knows the loofah. It's a beautiful vine. And unlike the bushel gourds, the loofahs are actually edible until they get up to about six inches, and then they become really fibrous and, and non-edible. But once they get to maturity, you pull them off and you dry them, and they become a sponge. You use them for dishwashing, exfoliant in showers. These also do really well at farmer's markets. This is the seed from three gourds.